Question 11, Part A. To determine the exact values of the x-intercepts of the function e to the x sine x on the interval 0 to 2 pi, we need to set y, or f of x, to be 0 and solve the resulting equation for x. So when is sine x equal to 0? Well, if we consider our unit circle, sine x is equal to 0 when x equals 0, or x equals pi, or x equals 2 pi, or x equals 3 pi, and so on. So sine x equals 0 when x is equal to k pi, where k is an integer. However, we are told the domain for f of x is between 0 and 2 pi inclusive. So the x-intercepts of f of x are x equals 0, x equals pi, and x equals 2 pi. Question 11, part b. The area enclosed between the graph of f of x and the x-axis can be represented using an integral. However, we need to be careful and be certain of whether the area is above or below the x-axis. We will use our calculator to obtain an accurate graph of f of x. Since f of x contains a trig function, we need to assure our calculator is in radians. We go shift, set up, and we scroll down until we find angle, and we want it to be in radians. We can now enter f of x into y1 as follows. We now need to set up our view window. So let's start with the initial view window. This question tells us the domain of f of x. So we can use this to enter in our x min and our x max. We can try and get a slightly better view of this by using zoom auto. We can see that from 0 to pi, the graph is above the x-axis, and from pi to 2 pi, it is below the x-axis. Thus, we can represent the area enclosed between f of x and the x-axis as follows. Question 11, part C. The integral from part B can be quickly evaluated using the graph we produced earlier. Since we have some area above and below the x-axis, we can use the mixed integral option. To find that, we go g solve integral and mix. Our lower bound is 0, and our upper bound is 2 pi. Thus, the area between the graph and the x-axis to the nearest square unit is 291 square units. Question 12, part A. The displacement function can be found by calculating the integral of the velocity function as follows. In the question, we are told that the object is initially at the origin. This tells us that s at 0 is equal to 0, 
and allows us to solve for C, the integration constant. Question 12, part B. To determine the displacement of the object after three seconds, we can calculate S at three by substituting T into our displacement equation found in part A. Thus, the object's displacement after 3 seconds is 5.943 metres. If you didn't get this answer, perhaps check that your calculator was in radians. Question 13, Part A. I can spy two key pieces of information to help us tackle this question. We are told that x is a continuous random variable and it has a probability density function. To be a valid PDF, the integral of f of x from x equals 0 to x equals 1 must be 1. Using this last condition, we can work out c. So, C is 3 over 2. Question 13, part B. For a continuous random variable with PDF f of x, we have the probability that x lies between a and b is equal to the integral of f of x from a to b. We can make use of this to evaluate the probability that x is less than 0.25. Now we can simplify this probability by using the fact we stated above. This holds as x has to be between 0 and 1, so x can be no smaller than 0. So the probability that x is smaller than 0 0.25 is 0 0.367. Question 13, part C. For a random variable with PDF f of x and x between a and b, the mean can be worked out using the following equation. This can be used to evaluate the mean as follows. Now that we know the mean of x is 3 over 8 tonnes, we can use this to evaluate the variance. So the variance of x is 19 over 320 tonnes squared, or 0 0.059 tonnes squared. Question 14, part A. Let HA be the height of a randomly chosen student from school A. The heights of students at school A are normally distributed with a mean of 165 centimetres 
and a standard deviation of 15 centimetres. We need to determine the probability that a randomly chosen student from school A is shorter than 180 centimetres, i.e. This probability can be calculated in the statistics app in the NCD mode. We're using a normal distribution and we need NCD. We enter in our values. So the probability that a student from school A is less than 180 centimetres is 0 0.841. Question 14, part B. To answer this question, we need to determine the value of K, where K is the shortest student who is in the top 2% of this distribution. We can use the inverse norm function to determine K. So we find K to be 195.8. But the question asks us to find the smallest integer value. So the smallest integer height of the shortest student in the top 2% of this distribution is 196 centimetres. Question 14, part C. We are now introduced to a different school, called School B. We are told that a student at School B has the same height as the height determined in question 14B. That was 196 centimetres. But the corresponding Z score is three. So from this, we know that for the distribution of heights in School B, the height 196 centimetres has a Z score of three. We now want to calculate the Z score for a student at school A with a height of 196 centimetres so we can compare this value to school B. We find that the Z score is equal to 31 over 15, which is just a little bit bigger than two. To visualize this, we can draw the standard normal distribution with our Z scores labeled. Since ZB is greater than ZA, the student in school B ranks higher in terms of percentile. Question 15. An internet search engine determines the ranking R that a website receives based on the function R is equal to log base 10 of 50 times H squared, where H is the number of hits the website has received. A website currently has 100 hits, and we need to determine how many more hits are required to increase their ranking by one. First, let's determine the website's current ranking. The website's current ranking is 5.69897. To increase their ranking by one, the website will need a new ranking of 6.69897. Knowing this, we can calculate the number of hits required to increase the ranking by one by solving the following equation.
So, an additional 217 hits are required to increase the website's ranking by one. Alternatively, we can solve this equation in the Solver app as follows. 